Hello and welcome to this time of online worship with Duffus Spiney and Hope Mint Parish. We hope during this time, wherever you're joining us from, you know and feel God's love and grace. Today we're going to be thinking about a passage from the Bible from Matthew 14, where Jesus fed a large crowd. Let's listen and enjoy together as we think about that story. Friends, I would like you to take a moment to think about different locations or a place. Somewhere you've perhaps visited or maybe somewhere you would like to visit. It could be somewhere near you or it could be somewhere further afield, maybe abroad. Maybe some place you would need to visit via aeroplane or boat or train. So we think about different locations can help us when we're thinking about Jesus and the story of how Christ fed a really big crowd. I'd like you to think about a location you feel really comfortable in, a location you enjoy being. It may be outside, it may be inside. Think about that place and hold it in your mind while we spend a few moments thinking about the crowd being fed. We know that Jesus had heard that John the Baptist had sadly died. So Jesus had taken a boat to a quiet place near the city of Bethsaida on the Sea of Galilee. Herod Antipas was ruler of Galilee and Perea and bore the title of Tetrach, literally meaning ruler of a quarter. He is often referred to by the Gospel writers as both Herod the Tetrarch and King Herod, but he never actually held the title of king. This Herod was the son of Herod the Great. We'll explore what this has to do with a little known place named Bethsaida. Bethsaida literally means House of the Fishers. Similarly, like the Beth of Bethlehem means the same thing. Bethlehem literally means house of meat or house of bread, depending on how it's translated. Fish, of course, for Bethsaida is significant for this story, so it's worth bearing in mind the name of Bethsaida and its fishy origins. Matthew 14 tells us about how Jesus' disciples and many thousands of others had flocked to be around Jesus as word had spread of his teaching. Jesus had compassion for the people who gathered around him and his followers and healed the sick and infirm among them. Then as the evening approached, the quiet and more remote location they were in was ever apparent. Some of Jesus' disciples pointed out that they were in a pretty isolated spot that maybe Jesus should think about sending the crowds away so that they could go to the nearby towns and villages and buy some food. But Jesus said the crowd didn't need to go away because he and the disciples would feed everyone themselves. I'm sure this caused Jesus' disciples to worry a little as they realised they only had five loaves of bread and two fish. They said to Jesus, Lord, surely this isn't enough to go around. Jesus asked for the bread and fish to be brought to him before telling the crowds of the gathered people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish and looked up to heaven, blessing them before breaking the food. Then he gave the food to the disciples, who in turn gave it to the crowds of people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve baskets full of leftovers. Some key words or phrases for us to think about. Quiet place, remote place, villages, didn't need to go away. Jesus asked for the bread and fish to be brought to him. Food then given to the disciples, food given to the people. All of these words or short sentences can get us thinking about the location 
location of where the people were in the quiet or pl places outside, farther outside the towns and villages, and where the food was at different points during the story. When we travel to different locations, especially some distance from our homes, it's likely we make plans for where and when we will have our meals. Do you think anyone in the crowd would have made similar plans when travelling to hear Christ's teaching? Would location have mattered to them? Even though Christ may have been tempted to send them away to take time for his own grief and pain, Jesus' first instinct is to care and to love and to tend to the people. There are lessons in this for us. First, in all things, Jesus remains steadfast. And second, to truly follow Jesus, we need to find a way to give out that same compassion, love and care for all those around us, even when we may feel it is most difficult. I asked you earlier to think about a location you enjoyed and are comfortable in. I wonder where that place is. Is it a place you are often by yourself or with others? Perhaps there's a mix. Is it a place you feel nourished in spirit as well as in body? Is it a place you feel God? If so, have you ever asked yourself why? If the answer is no, or perhaps you haven't thought about the question before, you're maybe uncertain of the answer. Location, location, location. Indoors, outdoors. Feeding the multitude or feeding one. God is with us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read a prayer together. Lord God, we thank you for all the things that we can learn today. We thank you for all the things we can share, all the things we can contribute. We thank you we can get together with many other people and also have some time for ourselves. Lord God, we thank you that wherever we are, you are with us. Help us to always welcome people that we don't maybe know personally ourselves and they maybe don't know us but we can share and learn from each other the different cultures and the different things that we can contribute Lord God hear us as we pray together in the prayer you taught us our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 